will come back now here and then we are into the next day's program of this fusion procurement implementation so we are going ahead and then we will now uh, have a look at it today uh, i am going to start with the consigned inventory and then afterwards i will now set up the costing transactions because consigned inventory i have one issue uh, which i am unable to understand uh, previously i was having issue and then uh, i never tested it and i will now leave it to vignesh for testing it actually so let us go there and start the consigned inventory The very famous process, and then it is being practiced almost in every industry actually. Uh, so let's go there and then have a look at the document. <clears throat> C colon e business documentation. If you go to the e business documentation, if you go to uh, article AP cash management, how come I'm not having this now? Oh, they're all financial documents. <clears throat> We have e-business documentation, yeah. Artful purchasing. Then if we go to this place, on day four, maybe on day three, I think. <coughs> so not, that is called a consigned process, actually. And then see this place, yeah. So if you go to the e-business documentation and then you can go to the purchasing, auto purchasing and then on purchasing day five, you will now find one consigned process actually. It is the e-business process, it is almost similar but there are some changes actually. Double click on it. Yeah, double click on The consigned process is an excellent JIT actually. JIT stands for just in time, in which case, what we have to do as an industry is what whenever we need it you buy it and then you use it for manufacturing but what happens is that uh, when you want to, to buy now the supplier will now have a lead time of let's say five days or seven days and then you have to manufacture it let's say i'm manufacturing a monitor i need a picture tube and then if i order a picture tube he will now give me only after seven days time so your production gets delayed actually so the jit concept says that you have to buy only when you need it Otherwise, do not keep anything on your inventory at all. You must have a zero stocking. And that is the excellent concept of consigned inventory and then many, many industries are following it. So what we do is, we go on then discuss with the supplier actually. We will now go on and discuss with many suppliers actually. And then we will now make a BPA. A BPA will be made to him. <coughs> and then there, once when you make a BPA, <coughs> uh, the BPA will be a governing document for this one actually. We will now make a consigned BPA actually. So he normally sells, let us say, uh, every uh, picture tube for around, say, let us say, thousand rupees. We will now go for a blanket agreement for a six months period for a consigned inventory. He will now say we will constantly consume around thousand uh, uh, picture tubes every month, and then he had to give it for six months actually. So for which we will now create one uh, area now, in our, within our battery limits, whatever they will now create area, and then we will now give it to the supplier. The supplier will now prepare a what's called a shed actually here and then he will now manage to this stuff also so what we do is the bpa is already made and then afterwards we will now make a standard purchase order against the bpa so once we make it the consigned supplier agrees for a payment only for the consumed material and not the supplied material actually so let us say we will now give an order for thousand as a standard purchase order referencing the bpa so once when the material crosses the gate, we will not have any standard or direct reserve protein. Fine, we'll now only you know, we will not have a standard or inspection reserve protein. We can have only a direct because it is his battery lecture. So he becomes the owner of this, and then it will be kept on an expense of inventory lecture. <coughs> so the asset will not go up at all. And then afterwards, out of which what happens? You want to you know, manufacture some hundred monitors. So you're going to pull it actually. In our company, we physically have a Lakshman Rega over here. So whatever crosses Lakshman Rekha is mine. If Sita crosses Lakshman Rekha, she is mine actually. So likewise, what happens? We have really drawn a Lakshman Rekha in the same supplementary, and then we will now tara tara tara. We will now pull the material and then keep it over here. Now. We will now perform a transaction called transfer reverse stock. So out of thousand, when you transfer four hundred, it becomes yours, and then it is not his actually. His stock is six hundred, and then our stock is four hundred. The system will now show a total stock of thousand in this supplementary. The system will be showing a total stock of thousand. This supplementary, 
and then it will be transferred and then out of which 600 is his and then 400 is ours now you create a consumption advice for whatever you transfer now so once when the consumption advice is created for the 400 then what happens we can run the pay on reserve and then afterwards payables open interface import and then the invoice will be ready for payables actually so this is the process so in this process what is the advantage for us we don't pay the thousand quantities which have been supplied by the supplier immediately the supplier has agreed only when you transfer and then when you create a consumption advice it becomes eligible for payment so he has to wait till we consume and then we have to discuss with him how frequently i will consume now. so depending upon the frequency of consumption the prices will now come down we will be discussing with very many suppliers to be a consigned supplier and then we will now tell us how frequently we are going to convert what is the total volume of transaction which you are going to make in a month so the volume of transaction in a month and then how frequently you are going to consume and then how frequently you are going to create consumption advice will all be discussed with the supplier and then he will now become ready to become a consigned supplier so for him the additional overhead is what he has to build a shed actually he has to build a shed here and then keep his manpower for this when we implemented for uh, tamil nadu uh, petrochemicals uh, petro uh, Pro, uh, tamil nadu papers limited tnpl in karur so what is a government company actually so they told that no external party can come inside and then maintain a sub inventory in the within our premises now so tnpl itself is now maintaining this sub inventory with his with his own manpower and that they will now communicate to the supplier that what happens this is, this is now in the consigned area and that this much you are transferred since it is a government company the supplier agrees actually they will not say that they will not cheat actually so they will simply supply and then what happens it will be kept in a separate place actually they have made a big go down and then the lock on key the inventory in charge will be having it now so all the metal which is coming in what happens will be kept in the consigned inventory and then whenever he consumes he will not transfer it and then he will not prepare you know what happens draw it also directly and then i will not i will not make a consumption advice and then uh, uh, what happens it, it will now be followed by a payables process so this is called a er as an use invoice actually in ebus <clears throat> so the process is almost same but the method is slightly different here the method is different so we are going to see about how it is configured in fusion now it's a very important concept and then many companies are using this consigned concept so let us go and then see about how it's being done in fusion actually <clears throat> it's one of them is not working for me i don't know what where i am making a mistake i'm not exactly understanding my concern so the first activity which you have to do is what we have to go on the um, we go there and then you long go to the payable option uh, the configure procurement business function i go to set up amendments and go there click on it and then go to the task now click on search it's called manage is a this is called configure configure procurement business function ignesh any doubt on this now or you will understand this process business process so it's yeah, yes, um, so it's basically just in time concept and then uh, we don't pay upon uh, receipt of the medical actually fine we will be paying only when the consumption advice is created whatever has been consumption advice is created is only eligible for payment actually so go to the configure procurement business function and then here we have to set up this procurement bu so click on okay go so here go down the consigned ones the consignment terms expanded now so here uh, aging onset point fine here uh, none is not working for me at the end so here what happens i made this as a and then aging period zero works that means what as and when i create the consumption advice as and when i make a receipt or when as and when i make a transfer to regular i can very well run the what's called uh, consumption advice after the transfer to what happens you see after this now <clears throat> after the uh, what's called transfer to regular stock we can immediately run the consumption advice in ebus but here it was not working i had to wait for one day actually so the aging has to be for one day so zero aging is not working here i don't know why it's so vignesh you make a check of it now and probably it may be working now and zero is not working uh, only when i give one day it's not working actually so uh, zero is not working so that means what to whatever i i transferred it today i can create a consumption advice only tomorrow when i create it now what happens is not working so that you have to analyze maybe that may be a bug they might have so we will not do this now fine we will not see whether it works or not fine whether if it works it's fine okay <clears throat> and then how frequently you want to create so when i was in steel authority 
<coughs> working for it. Or we even have the consign concept. And then we have a concept of creating the consumption advice only once in a week. That is on every Friday, we'll not create. So whatever has got accumulated, whatever has been transferred to regular during the whole week, we will not create only one consumption advice in steel authority. But since it is a government company, what happens? All suppliers agree for it. They don't have much of a, what is called, a, uh, they will not uh, do anything at all. Fine. They say it's okay. So because because the, the workload is heavy if you're doing it daily. So we will not, the payable clerk has to do a lot of processing every day. And so what happens? We will now make it as a weekly only in this place. Some places also monthly is possible, but we have seen a day, weekly also. Now for this exercise, I'm making it as a daily. And you can even go for a specific organization or is based for all organizations. Consumption advice, somebody can be for all. all. And then that's what it does. Fine, do that, click on it. And then we will now give a save. Now. Fine, this is the setup that you have to make now. Do that, click on it and then give a save and close. On the configured procurement business function has been saved. So we are given what? One day now. Fine, zero was not working for me. That's why what happens? I am not given a one day now. So zero, Vignesh uh, will now experiment and then see this now. If it works, it's fine. So on a zero, uh, as soon as you make a transport regular, uh, it has to uh, be eligible for consumption advice. Now I'm making it as only one because one is only working for me. Now let us go there and then create a supplier. Now. Fine, we are going to create a supplier now. So go to the home page and then here go to the procurement. <coughs> and then here you go there, you go to the suppliers. We are now going to create a consigned supplier actually. So go to this place and then click on create now. Create supplier. <coughs> So supplier is K99 underscore cons underscore sub underscore one now. Con supply. So it's a spread authorized one. So the thing is mandatory if I go on and check on it. Con sub one is now getting created now. We must specify along with the corporation. So click on create now. We are now making a con supplier over here now. <coughs> And then as soon as it is done, what happens? You go to the payments and then make one of the, one of the payment as a default method now. Anything is okay because uh, it's not, it doesn't matter. You click on select it. And then here, uh, default, make it as a default now. And then make it as a default. So if they're all only for information purposes, it doesn't have any much of a meanings as such now. And click on save. So by which, first of all, the supplier is now saved. <coughs> Last save. So go to the address now. Click on the address. address. Click on plus now. So I will now say K99 underscore cons underscore. Country is United States. Okay. So I think it's mandatory. It is for ordering and remit to find. Go there. And then here now. Uh, and nothing else is required. And give a save and close by which our address is now created. Let us now create a contact now. Go to the contacts and then create a contact now. <coughs> and plus now. The contact will be residing in an address. So we'll be associating an address over here now. Last name is a mandatory one now. I'll go there. I'll now fill up the remaining ones as such now. And then go to click on it actions and then go to select now. So since we have only one address, that will be only going to click on it. This contact is now sitting in this address actually. Click on it and then save and close now. So by which the contact is now saved now. Now we'll now go to the sites and then we'll now create a site. Click on contact site and click on plus one. The plus will be coming only for a procurement agent. He, this particular employee, you know, K99 EMP1 is already a procurement agent now. Click on plus one. Only legal employees are about to allowed to create a site actually. Click on it and choose this one. And the address gets defaulted over there. I'll now make a change. I will now say uh, cons underscore site underscore. So we can even choose this now. Find click on it. And then once when you give a save, the remaining uh, tab regions will be getting enabled, like enables also. I go click on save now. Find the remaining tab region will be enabled. <coughs> And then I go to the purchasing, and then I will now make it as a pay on use now. Only upon use, I am going to make a payment now. So I will now enable the pay on use. Now. So I will now enable the pay on use. So once when you enable the pay on use, the invoice summary level becomes mandatory. I know that. So I will now make it as a result. So invoice summary level is mandatory. So it is now pay on use. Only upon use, I am going to pay. Only when I make a receipt, I will not pay at all. Consent is not done. Invoice summary level is done. 
Google. So click on save now. Now go to the invoicing and then give the currencies for invoicing. That is a US dollars. And then payment currency is also US dollars. So click on save now. So invoicing has been done now. Right? In the payments part, the payables will be filling it up now. Site assignments is basically for a multi org access control fine. Every site has to be given now. Right? Click on site and then well, no, go on the way. Click on auto create assignments. So click on auto create assignments. Wherever he is enabled for it, will be all be co-holding it now. Right? So the client view and the build view is now coming up. Right? So click on it and then I will now put what K99 underscore lock one. As a ship one build to <clears throat> and then remember, uh, we have to give the liability distribution and things by one of them that will be defaulted over there now. But a PO will be having it if the supplier is having a different account that will be coming up on the PO actually. So this will be uh, filled up by the financial team actually. I go to click on save and then by which what happened the site is now getting fully created. Thank you, save and close. Okay, now see the site is now created. So once when you have completed all sites, what happens? You give a submit now. And whenever you have a submit, please remember that you have to submit it. Otherwise, what happens? Some of the functionalities may not work at all. Now I am not going to make a consigned agreement. Now I am not make a consigned agreement. So I will not make a BPA. In Webis, we have to make a combination of ASL BPA. Here ASL itself is not there. Fine, there is no ASL at all. So we have to make a combination of ASL BPA in Webis now. But here it is not required. Only BPA is sufficient. BPA is sufficient. So first of all, before that, what happens? We'll now go on and create an item now. In the meantime, what happens? We'll go there and then open up eBiz now. Fine, eBiz has not opened it up. <clears throat> Let me open up eBiz now. <clears throat> so there in eBiz, we have one attribute now. Fine, we have one attribute in the item itself. The item itself has got an attribute. But here, that consigned attribute is no more there at all. That is not there. So there is no need to set up anything specifically for consigned item actually. <coughs> okay. <coughs> and then here, if you go there, go to the inventory, go to items, and then go to master items. Is a key in any one of the child or So we have a special attribute for an item. <clears throat> so if you go to the purchasing, not the purchasing, uh, maybe in the GP region, in the GP, if you go there, you will not find one consigned attribute. Is there. This is for the mental managing unit, is not only as a consigned attribute. So this is uh, not there at all. Fine. This consigned attribute on the general planning division is there. Fine. It is not there here. Go there and change. So let us go there and then create an item now. <clears throat> so you will go to product management and then you go to the product information management. Let us now create an item for the consigned now. Click on it. And then click on create item. So it's a key 99 master root item class. Click on yes. Just watch if there is any attribute you had enabled now. K99 underscore cons underscore item one. Take over it and then put the description. And then go to the specifications. I will now have the specifications. So we will now go to the planning area. In the planning area, we have a consigned attribute there now. And I don't find that attribute over here. No, is there? Is there? Is there? Is there? I don't make consigned as yes. Supplier managed. What happens? The consigned is yes. I don't have noticed it. So probably it must have come bit later. I'm not sure about it. So the consigned is yes now. Find that. <clears throat> uh, release authorization required. Uh, I don't know what exactly it is now. Fine. I don't make it as a supplier actually. Uh, ASN has recently come. I've never worked on ASNs actually. Uh, so, is the release authorization required by the supplier and then it's a consigned one? Click on it. Consigned is yes now. And then, okay. And then in the purchasing, we'll now go on the given this price because already there, not in the template. So, that will be getting defaulted over there. So, it's okay. And then I give a save. And I'll now go to the associations directly and then let me associate it. 
So the consigned has been used as well. Good action, so now good assert and act. Organization is a key, 99. Enter in now. I'll now generate the first org. It's all done now. I'm going to click on save and close now. Key 99 cons item one is now ready. I'm going to click on save and close. Now we are going to make a consigned agreement. In EBIS, we simply make a BPA only. In EBIS, we simply make only a BPA. And then no such consigned agreement is now being made now. So it's a simple BPA only. Now here we have to make a consigned agreement now. Fine. In infusion, there is a change you now. I'm going to click on it. Let us now make a consigned agreement. So click on the home icon and then here we go there and then we will now create a consigned agreement. So we go to the procurement and then here I will now go to the agreements now. Agreements and orders will now take you to the same page actually. So click on it and then it will now go to the agreement and create agreement. So we'll make an agreement. So drop down and then make it as a consigned agreement. Consignment agreement is the one. So we are going to choose the consignment agreement. The supplier is a con supplier. <coughs> con sub one. Site and contact will be defaulted. So click on create, we are now getting consigned agreement. So the consigned agreement is now getting created now. It's exactly like a normal BP only. There is no difference, but just because what happens, you'll be finding the consigned part will be coming up now. Fine. Functionality wise is exactly like a BP only. Fine. It's a consigned agreement, but it's like a BP only. We go there, we will not give an amount agreement now. And then we can even give a MR. MR at the agreement level and then MR at the lines level, both are available here now. And then here, what happens? You can see uh, uh, in the pay on it is not enabled actually. Uh, uh, nothing else is there. And then you negotiate the terms and conditions here. And that will be getting defaulted under the consigned order actually. So in EBIS, it's like a normal BPA and then normal SPO. Normal SPO here, what happens is the consigned agreement and then is a consigned order in fusion. Consigned agreement and consigned order. So discuss everything and then you go to the, this is a new tab which has come out. In the normal BPA, you won't find the consignment terms, fine. Uh, whereas in a, in a consigned agreement, we will be having this. In a consigned agreement, we'll be having the consignment terms actually. And then here, you go there, aging onset is what is it? And then daily, and then one. These three things are getting defaulted from the configure requirement, configure procurement business function actually. Fine, if you want, you can override it. And then the billing cycle close date. I will now put what I will now say building cycle close date. <clears throat> uh, I will now say uh, today itself. We will now see whether it works or not. So today I am putting it now. So today is the closing. Maybe if I run the consumption advice, it may work. No fine. And then you can now see the pay on use is now coming up. Now. The default line is a consignment line. Only on the consignment terms, you will be finding these two things. Now. Only upon use, you are going to do it. And then default line is a consignment line. As well as. And then I have now put today's date as a billing close cycle date. I know that. And then I will now go there. Click on that. So let me add the line now. <clears throat> go there. It's a K99 underscore cons item one now. Go there. And then it will not have any quantity like a BPA now. Supplier is now saying as a cons item. Supplier item name also can give now. Give me some of the reach now. We can even uh, uh, equip the expiry date. This so we will expire on this date now. So we are given a future date. We will click on it, and then these are all the consignment terms which you have done now. Right? Consignment terms is for this, and then for the terms and conditions, this one right? that will be getting defaulted on the PO <clears throat> on the terms and conditions. We will now put some Ajib terms, and then see whether that is getting defaulted or not. So K99 DHL, the error is there now. I will drop it down. I will now say A01 track one. I am not putting it. So that will be defaulted onto your purchase orders actually. Fine. So these are the things which I discussed on and this is the one where I am having some doubts on this one. Fine. It's not exactly working for me previously. Now probably the bug might have been fixed now. And then as I, as it's what happened, the notes and attachments you can very well do uh, write the notes and then what happens. Uh, so cons supplier. And then you can make an attachment also. So then click on save. <coughs> So 2003 is a consigned agreement for this consigned supplier actually. 2003 is the one. So you are submitting it for approval and then it will be getting approved now. <clears throat> I hope that uh, nobody has uh, fiddled around on the approvals actually. In the other case, we we'll go to the manage agreements and then go on and have a look at 2003. Agreement number is 2003. And then give a search. 
it has to show me as open. So spending approval, no. Click on it. I'm not going to say that exactly what's going on. Not available. It is an automatic approval. It has to become open. You can see what the application developer has approved and then task completion is now in the process now actually. So click on done now. And then again, requery on this 2003 will be approved now. Is open now. So in eBase, it will be called as approved. Here, it will called as open. All the approved purchase orders will be shown as open actually. <coughs> now, against this 2003, we are going to make a consigned order actually. Close it now. So let us go there and then get a consigned order. Click on it. And then we will now go to the what? Create order. Now an agreement is affected and then what happens, I'm now going to make a consigned order also. Consignment order. Remember, payment will not be made at all for the consignment order. Supplier is K99 underscore cons. Uh, supplier is right. It's a consignment order, it's not a normal order actually. Normal sales, it's not a standard purchase order, it's a consignment order now. So click on create now, we are going to create. So we are creating a new order and we are going to reference the 2003 actually. As a consignment agreement. So you can see everything is now coming at the header level. And with click on another here, what happens? Go there. The terms and conditions are there now, actually. And then uh, here I have changed this uh, shipping method. You will not see upon putting the item whether it gets changed or not. Because if you go to the notes and attachments, <clears throat> nothing is there now. Fine with that. So click on item now. So once when I put an agreement, the agreement has to come over here. The agreement has to come over here. Fine, click, on it. Fine, click on plus. Let me put the item. So on which we have now negotiated with the supplier for a particular item now. Click on plus and then let me add the item. Now. So it's a key 99 underscore cons. So let me go on then order font and quantities. It has to come now to wait for the description and category to come automatically. So once when the item has been populated, you can see the agreement number coming up also. So on the agreement, we have now had a different shipping method that is also getting defaulted over here. So the consigned agreement, uh, uh, the terms are getting defaulted under the SPO the moment you put the order over here. The 100 now. And then let me go to the schedules and then I will now give this, give the dates. So on which date, if you want to have it now. So I will say today's date. Now we go there and then save it now. If I click on save. So 3023, 2003 is the consignment agreement. 3023 is the purchase order. And then this purchase order is not eligible for a payment. And then only the consumption advisors which are created against this order are only eligible. So the PO will not be eligible for this now. Fine, you can now see on the schedules itself, that it is not, it is not a two-way, two-way, three-way PO reward, two-way, three-way, four-way, it will not come now, fine, PO is it, uh, is it match will not be coming, but there will be a different one on the schedules actually, there is not eligible for everyone, only upon a consumption advice, we can run this pay on resident, or invoice can be done, only when the consumption advice is created, what happens in the In US, once when I run the consumption advice, this ADS pay on resident, or invoice is run automatically, the payables open interface is also running automatically, and then I have the invoice, the base tables of payables actually, for clauses in but here, this pay on receipt is called a send pay on receipt now, that yesterday we have seen now, that is not running automatically for anything, even for a ERS also, invoice also, and then this is a ERS and use invoice. And for these two things, this is not running. So, uh, Vignesh will now make an R&D on this and then see whether, how to make it enabled actually. Go there, it's all done, fine. You don't know, go to the schedules now, fine. Go there, click on it and I will now edit it and then have a look at it. So it is not a payment against this. Uh, fine, well, click on it. The invoice match option is not PO or receipt. It is a consumption advice match. So only when you get a consumption advice, what happens? You'll be able to match it now. Fine. So without which it will not be done because it's a consignment order actually. <clears throat> click on it and then click on OK now. So the schedules you have the invoice matches the consumption advice now. I go there. So click on submit. Three zero two three is now getting submitted now. Three zero two three is now submitted. So 3023 is now submitted and click on okay. And then we will now open up one more tab region now. And then we will now make a receipt for it. 3023 is a purchase order. 
So let us not make a result. And remember, it is not our item at all. So the moment, one more thing I have forgotten now, fine. Uh, one more thing which I have forgotten, what happens? It must be a standard result, no fine. You know, make a change, you know, fine. It must be a direct result because it is not our item. So you now go there, click on manage orders 3023. We have to make it as well. 3023. Click on search now. It must be what? If you go there and then you know, have a look at it now, fine. Click on it and then you know, have a look at what's called the schedules now. If it is not so, we have to modify it actually. 3023 is still pending approval. Okay, it's now open actually. Now it has become open. Click on it. So go there. Go to the schedules now. So here, since the item is not ours, we will not be in a position to what do anything at all. Fine. We will not go there. Then. Hey, we now have a look at it. Now I click on the details now. We will now see whether there is a direct result routing. Result routing must be direct. Fine. It is not, it is wrong actually. Fine. We have to make a change on this one. It must be direct. Because once when it crosses the gate, once when it crosses the gate, it has to go to an expense of inventory. There we have to receive it and then uh, what happens? It must be suppliers inventory. It is not our stock. Fine. So uh, here we cannot make any uh, standard and inspection result routing not possible because it is not our material. During the transfer to regular only, we can inspect the material. Otherwise, what happens? You know, you're not supposed to inspect the material. Do the actions and then go to edit now. Let us now make a change on this. A change order is not created now. <clears throat> so always give a reason fine, why you're doing it now. Fine. Change of result. Okay. So later on, when you take a report, we can understand about the change order one is for this reason. So this is not possible in Nevis at all. Fine, you know, when you make a revision, we cannot give a description there. Now. Click on it. And then go there. Click on it and then click on edit. And I'm going to make a change to direct. Go down. And then we'll now make the result routing as direct. So click on OK and then resubmit it now. And then click on submit. The new change order is now submitted now. The purchase order is already the open status, but the revision is now undergoing a change and then that has to be approved. The change order is now approved. I click on it and then click on done now. And then close it now. Done and then close it now. And then make a search now. You'll not find a blue icon coming up over here because the change order is under approval. So the change order is up and approved. So once when the approval is completed, we'll now go and then receive it actually. So if you see a change order still pending, that is what a message is coming. And change order is pending for approval actually. So once it is approved, the blue icon has gone, now it is approved. So 3023, we will now go and then receive it now. We will now go to the supply chain execution and then we will now go to the inventory management. And then here we are going to make a result of this. Click on it. Now we go to the results now. 3023 is the one. Receive expected shipments. 3023. And then click on search. The PBO is available for reserve time. Go click on reserve. Since we have enabled a blind receiving, it is not showing this now. Go click on it. I'll put the entire quantity in the quantities. Go there. Since the destination is inventory. Sub inventory, let us now drop it and then do it. And remember, it has to be an expense sub inventory. If you put it on asset, uh, the material auditor will be coming and then questioning you because it is not your stock actually, it is a supply stock. So, upon transfer to regular, you have to move it to your regular stock actually. That is the way actually. <clears throat> so, go there. So, sub one, <clears throat> click on create result. Click on create result. So, you're going to create a result now. Click on it. And then I will give a submit now. So I click on submit now. <clears throat> so click on submit now. Find create result is now getting made now. So 1015 is the result number actually. 1015 is the result number. Click on OK. It is now delivered also. It is received and delivered. I click on done now. Well done. So here we go there and then we'll now go and then have a look at what it is only received. We'll now go to the inventory and then have a look at the stock. So switch over to inventory now. We go to the inventory and then here we go to the manage item quantities and then I will now put the item over here. It's key 99 and then give a tab to the item. Click on it. I will now see everything over there. Now I click on search now. 
<clears throat> so now you can see that uh, uh, it is not showing anything when you expand it, it will not show expand it because it's all organizational. Fine, let us now change the organization and have a look at it now. So K991 now. Click on OK. Go there, click on it, and then you go to the manager item quantities now. So go there, K99 underscore cons, and then your tab. And then now click on search. So we are in our organization now. So in this organization, on end is 100 now. But nothing is our stock actually. It is not our stock at all. It is all supplier stock actually. So we call them as a consigned stock actually. So in the supplementary we have it. So if you go there, you keep a customer the supplementary. The consigned details is now coming up. So click on the consigned details. So here you can see the owning party is supplier, and then the owning side is this of this hundred products. So here it has all reached over here. In this place, it has reached. It must be uh, normally an expense ability. So uh, many companies, what happens, they will not keep it as expense ability. After transferring to regular stock, they will now make a movement into an asset ability. They will now move the material into an asset ability from that supplier's facility actually. It all depends upon how you are operating upon. If you are operating it as only an asset ability itself, what happens, you are not putting it, then it will be an asset ability. So company to company, the practices will vary, but it is strongly recommended to have one expense of inventory to keep the supplier stock. And then after transfer to regular, you move it to your asset sub inventory so that what happens, your stock value will now go up in value as well as in quantity also. So that is the way we are doing it now, but uh, it, it may even vary from company to company. So this is what I was going to do. So now, right now, right now, if I check the inventory valuation, uh, this will reflect in the inventory valuation. Or? Yes, because now I have now kept it on this sub inventory. Now this is asset sub inventory. So inventory valuation would have been hit now. So there are companies, I have seen one company where they receive only an asset inventory. They don't put in an excess of because what happens, they say that this transaction, uh, what happens, uh, they have to, after transfer to regular, they have to perform one more sub inventory transfer of moving it from the uh, expense ability to asset inventory. But uh, what they say is that even if it affects uh, in this, what happens, inventory valuation, it doesn't matter. That's what they say. In some, after some point of time, it is only our swap and so what happens, it doesn't matter. But that is not the correct way. But uh, people operate in a different, different manner. If you run the inventory valuation, it will not show you your 100 quantities value as your stock value. Now, we are going to perform a transfer now. Fine. We are going to perform a transfer to regular now. So this transfer to regular, we are going to make it. So click on done now. We will now perform a transfer to regular. Click on it. And then you go there. And then in the consigned inventory part, what happens, you can now see you have one transfer to regular. Create transfer to regular. So create transfer to consigned, create transfer to wound actually. We can even send it back to the consigned also. If you excess drawn and then you are not using it, we can even send it back to the consigned. Actually. But remember, on the consumption advice only, we can very well uh, create an AP invoice. Actually. So create a transfer to own. And we are going to make a own. Create. There it's called regular enables. We know called as the word transfer to regular. Here it is known as a transfer to own. Actually. So click on the create transfer to own. Now. <clears throat> well, click on it. And then click on plus. <clears throat> so item. Is, uh, K99 underscore cons on a new tab now. And then click on search now. Fine. It will now see how much are eligible for a created or a transfer to own now. So this item is eligible for this now. And click on apply. And then click on OK. It will now show this. So it will now show you the total stock out of which what happens is you can consume certain things. Now. So the supplier stock is now 100. So out of which, what happens, I'm now going to transfer 20 only. I need only 20 for manufacturing. So you go there. And then the consumption advice will be created for this 20 only. So go there, click on it. And then you go there. And then you know. <clears throat> so it's not shown there. So click on submit. So uh, we can even edit the details in a bigger manner than do it now. Fine. If it's a locator control, we can even put the locators and other things now. Fine. So click on submit now. <clears throat> so we are submitting it now. So 3023 is a PO number. <coughs> <coughs> against which all the 100 have been received and then 20 are transferred to regular. <coughs> Your transaction process with no issues now. Now you go there <coughs> and now you go to the manage item quantities and then have a look at it. <coughs> Click on search. 
Now you go there, click on it. Now, if you keep your cursor, the consign window will be coming now. Now I'll now keep it at the organization level. So previously at the sub inventory level itself was coming now. Now it's also coming again. Now. I go there. What is this consign inventory? Now you can see the supplier's stock is only 80 now. Even though we have an one and a hundred. Because we have transferred 20 to regular actual. Out of which 20 becomes a pay, uh, what happens, uh, invoiceable actual. The 20 quantities become invoiceable. Now we have to run a concurrent now. And then what happens, you go to duplicate now. We have to run a concurrent now. So go to the tools and then go to the schedule to process. We'll be running a concurrent. So click on schedule new process. <coughs> it's called create consumption advice. It can see on this The supplier is K99 underscore cons. Search. Con site is coming. Display lot on serial numbers is not there at all. Group by transaction type. <coughs> we'll now take a report also. <coughs> There is no lot on serial. I will now run this consumption advice. Fine, click on submit now. This means <laughs> accrual is generated at this point for yes. the 20 quantity. Exactly. Accrual gets generated for this 20 quantity on consumption advice only. Very correct. Accrual gets created only for this 20 quantities at this place now. Great consumption advice. And that becomes eligible for creating an invoice actually. So the only difference is when I make that uh, receipt, initial receipt of 100, there is no accounting entry generated. Yes, no accounting entry because it's not our uh, uh, so stock at all. So when you make a receipt, what happens? You are receiving inspection account to accrual account gets created. My, now it is not coming. Only at this stage that is now getting completed. So it is now print the consumption advice report. No, let's click on it. Let's see what you see. Now publish it now. Export to PDF now. Save. So go there, no data form. Mainly because I have given what the aging period is one day. Actually. So tomorrow, if you go on and run this report, you'll be finding the whole report and then we can very well push it to the payables invoice actually. So it's not coming. So, but if I make it a zero, it's not working also at the time. Now I don't know whether Vignesh, uh, uh, you will not try with the zero. The aging period is zero and then try. Fine, we'll not see whether it works or not. <clears throat> when, you're, when you're experimenting it, what happens, you make a check at zero actually. So tomorrow when we can make the consumption advice, it becomes eligible for a payment now. So that way, what happens, it will be getting completed. And then we can, in EBIS, upon consumption advice itself, we can make the pay on visit, the payables open interface report run automatically. All the three concurrents will be running automatically in EBIS now. But here, uh, even even for an ordinary ERS invoice also, I'm unable to run the pay on visit. I don't know how to do that actually. So if anybody finds it out, fine. This will be a ERS and use invoice actually. Three years and even once. When you do that, send the pay on the zip. Fine. So that will be pay on the zip. So tomorrow we'll be running the consumption advice, and then we'll now see that this will be getting created. <clears throat> so what else? Then that's it. So at this point of time, if you have any doubts, you can tell me. Fine. So we stop our discussion on the consigned inventory now. One second. <clears throat> we'll have a water. Bottle. So <clears throat> now. We will now go to the costing setup section. Fine. This will be running it tomorrow, then you'll now see this. Let us now continue on the costing setup section. And now go to uh, one level again back to now. So fusion procurement actually, fusion procurement documentation. And here we now go to the costing setup section. 
So we have now come to the fusion procurement documentation. So for the consigned inventory, we have seen the consigned process on the, yeah, purchasing day five actually. Now we are into fusion procurement documentation costing setups. So I told you that there are five source systems from where what happens we can perform the costing. In the costing area, we do financial accounting as well as cost accounting together. So we have what the inventory receiving and shipping is one source system, and then manufacturing is one source system. Inventory transactions to manufacturing, and then one is resource transactions to manufacturing, payables invoice, and then receivables invoice. And all these things are coming up now. So I told you that there's a five step process, a 12 step process now. Fine. Let us now begin with the first step. In the first step, I did a lot of R&D on this and then I created my own uh, costing key flux fields, everything I done, but later on, it's all a futile exercise. It was not required at all. And nobody wants this at all at this level. I have done a lot of things. Please don't do any R&D on this. It's a waste actually. And I created my own key flux field and then I did everything, but uh, that's not required at all. <clears throat> Creating a key flux field is not an easy job. It's a very tough job. And then I referred the documents and then I did everything. But finally, what I was, uh, the customer rejected it actually. <clears throat> I will tell you about what exactly the customer wanted actually. <clears throat> so don't do anything and then do the 12 steps as I am doing it actually. So manage costing key flexibility the one. So we'll now go to the task like this directly. There's a key flexibility from the right And then we we'll want to do this task. <clears throat> so go there, click on it, and then go to the setup and make runs. Is a manage costing key flexibility. Manage e. so manage costing key purchase. So the costing inventory, the costing is now done for oh, the consigned. Also, we have a separate costing. I never done this costing there at all. And I don't know how to the, 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 the one the consigned. I have never done it. Uh, rather, we never implemented consigned inventory at all. To anybody probably there, we had to go on and do it. I think probably. So we are not there. So we'll now go on and do the valuation and click on the valuation. The costing valuation. So here, if you go there and then click on the manage structures. So Oracle has ready-madely created nine structures here. In EVIS, we do the costing only for the inventory. So here, we have multiple combinations here actually. Fine. So uh, we have a cost org level costing, a cost org inventory level costing, and then a cost org inventory org, and then country specific. There is a three segmental costing actually. Here we have a four segmental costing, cost org, Inventory or country, project, and task. And then if you have a grade, cost org, inventory or grade, the three levels, three segmental costing. We have a lot level costing, or or inventory or lot, or cost org, inventory or project. So so many more flexibilities they have given. In one of the projects in Kuwait, I have now brought the sub-inventory level actually. So is there anything here now? It was not there, I created it. Here is here now. Cost org, inventory or sub-inventory. So I configured it. What they do is they bring all the bakery items and then they keep it in a chilled frozen sub inventory. So frozen sub inventory will be what happens? It will be frozen to minus ten or something like that now. So it will be frozen. And then from there, whenever they want to use it, they will now move it to a chilled sub inventory where they keep the item at around ten degrees now. So from minus ten to ten, what happens? It will be brought there. So from the chilled sub inventory, uh, what happens? It will be moved into the manufacturing actually. So once when they keep the item on the uh, what a frozen sub inventory, they will be incurring more cost actually because we have to heat, cool it to a great extent and so whatever the cost is more. So they asked me to go for this level of costing cost or inventory or then sub inventory. I configured it, I successfully configured and then showed the customer. Customer was not happy with the costing. Actually. And once when they run the financial statements, they found that it is a misleading figure and so whatever they asked me to drop and then they asked me to go for only cost or inventory. Or. Majority of the implementation, 99.99 .99 implementations will be having only these two segmental costing. Only. The other ones are there, but <clears throat> even though they are, they are all only fancy actually. Fine. Really, if you see <coughs> serial wise costing, <coughs> you may not like it at all. Fine. Every serial number would like to have a separate costing. Every lot would like to have a separate costing. Every grade can have a separate costing. Fine. If you want to do it, they have provided the flexibility, but in reality, nobody is using it actually. They use only this one. 
So let us now not create any managed key flux fields. I created my own flux field also. I have shown you, but don't create anything at all. Whatever the nine ones, whatever they have given is more than sufficient <coughs> for your implementation. Scroll so, down. There is few uh, more. Right? Huh? Just scroll down. There are few more. I right? think. Oh God! So many have been added. Previously, it was only nine actually. Uh, now they have brought in more. At subunit level also, they have brought all the combinations. Mm, at subunit level also, they have brought all the combinations. They say, you know, subunit projects, the data also, and all that. So, so many have been brought in now. But reality, really, what happens? You won't be finding that much of a use now. It's more complex than we have to do the costing at every subunit level also. Remember, if you're given, let us say, we have got some fifty subunitaries, we have to do the costing at every subunit also. Costing and then grade wise, if you are using it, subunitary wise, grade wise, you have to have an item cost, and that will be very cumbersome. And then uh, that may not be really meeting your purpose actually, <clears throat> because I tried a subunit level and then it was not meeting their purpose. So we, I did it this one, I configured and then shown to them, they didn't work at all for them. So they asked me to drop during testing itself. While dev instance, what happens there? We are now come to a normal one actually, <clears throat> cost or inventory. So don't get any uh, management flex fields or you know. Uh, whatever, whatever their oracle is given, all the things for you. No need any new class fields at all. <coughs> Step number one is not required for us. Don't so go there. Keep on. Step number two. So they brought in a new concept called cost org. No, cost org is a must. No, and we go and then create our cost org. Manage cost org. The new concept in company we does not manage the percentage cost org. <coughs> manage cost organization. This was this was there in OPM. Man. Cost organization. So then opium, huh? oh, 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 oh. Okay. So you can have cost organization, you can attach multiple inventory or to a cost organization. Oh, 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 oh. And then run costing for the cost organization. Very good. Very so good. you'll have the cost at the cost organization. We are also going to do the similar one here now, but uh, it was not there in the discrete manufacturing. And so he is saying that it is there in the what's called uh, the process manufacturing. Thank you, Compressor. Click on Plus. Click on plus I don't know. Uh, create a cost store. <laughs> so click on Plus and then I'm not going to get a cost store now. Cost of creation is simple now. And click on it and then I'll K99 underscore cost underscore R. <clears throat> so it is active. And then we'll now have to give a code like inventory or we'll now give a code now. And with a K99, I'll now say 001. I will now give it now. And then I will now put the legal entity. The legal entity is the heart of a structure actually, it's the owner of everything. And then we'll now go there and then we'll give the real. <clears throat> so click on search. Search. Every field is not a tappable field, and then if you tap it and then you want to commit, if you tell Oracle, they will not make it. They say that it is an additional, uh, uh, what happens, uh, overhead on the performance of the system. So uh, they give the tappable field only for certain things and not for everything. If you want, you can raise the SR, and then they will not make it as a tappable field. Actually. So that's it. The cost star gets created. I will not put the effect rate as what? Uh, one, one, one. So it's not giving us some date. It's okay. Leave it as it's compared. From that date onwards, it's effective. So click on save and close. Sometimes what happens from the accounting perspective, uh, they will now give different different dates on the start date actually. Uh, you talk to the financials guy also once. That's it. What happens? You go there, click on uh, oh, this is a search save actually. So let us now uh, go back one level now. How to come out of it now? And, uh, save is there. Let me put this now. Cost all is there. How to come out of the screen. Save is there on the right now. This is a save is for the search save, no? I don't think so. This is, this is okay. Save is for such. You can even search uh, the, the conditions, the fields you have, and you can save it actually. Mm -hmm. I think it is already created, but I don't, don't think they have an exit form. Mm -hmm. Save. But how to come out of it? Mm. Well, again, take a minute and come out of it. There must be some way, but I don't know how to do it. There was a back button. But uh, back button is there, but there must be a cancel or what happens. There. Come on, a done button must be there actually. The done button is not visible actually. Click on it, we'll now go for the next one. Setup and maintenance. Now go to the next setup. Now manage data access. I will be doing it a bit later. No, not now. Fine. I don't know it because we have to have the cost org is already done, so we can even do this. No, fine. The third step, you can very well do it. No, fine. The cost org is created. We'll now go on them, give the data access actually. Thank you on search now. So let's manage percentage data percentage access percentage. So manage data access for users now. Click on it. So go there and then we'll now search for the one and k99 underscore emp1 and then for the cost account. 
past account and if you want and such, I have given only one now. So uh, the third step, I had to give both the own basically. So cost accountant for the business unit and then cost accountant for the cost out is also required. Mental comes plus now. So it's key 99 underscore EMP one now. The role is cost accountant. I turn that along before the cost out. Business unit and the cost out. There's a must one now, find K99 if you get that, the cost of it. So that's it, fine. So these two data access is the must actually. Go on and search for it if you want to. For the cost accountant, both the business unit and cost of data access is required. So the third step is completed, then we are into the fourth step now, when we are going to create a cost book now. And it will now go there, and then click on the manage cost books. A cost book is basically a container actually. And click on the manage cost books. And then let us now go on and create it. Click on cost. So I will now say key 99 underscore cost underscore book now. So take a copy of it and then put the description. So that's it. Fine. That's it. Simple. Fine. You give a cost book name and then description. That's it. Fine. Go there. Give a save and then save and close. So simple now. Both the cost org and then cost book creations are simple. The next one is the important one that is called cost organization relationship. I don't want to take it at the fag end now because the other steps are really very tough actually. So uh, I will now continue this from step number five onwards tomorrow. And then I will show you step five to 12. I will now do it tomorrow. And then we will now perform the costing now also. <coughs> so any doubts on this now? Fine. Yes. It's good enough, right? You are able to compare it with the EBIS basically, right? Yeah. So Vignesh, on the consign inventory, you have a, a exercise of a zero days now, actually. So please do that. Yeah, see. So we'll now meet tomorrow and then we'll now continue on the cost setups. And then we'll now do the consigned inventory part, first of all, the consumption advice tomorrow. And then afterwards, we'll now continue with the cost. Okay. Bye.